Good day, Professor, and happy to see you. Happy to see you. How are you? So I just want to ask you, as a civic leader, how can you make youth work for social and uh, racial justice? Thank you very much for that question. So I refer to myself as a civic leader, yes, and an educator. In the past, I used to use a slash. But I don't need a slash because I think civic leadership and teaching is the same thing because every teacher should be um, a change agent and a leader. And this is why I do most of my activism inside schools, inside universities. I teach education for social justice and I try to sensitize students on the importance of uh, de bias in education. As I teach teachers to be, uh, my students are, uh, will be teachers in the future, and that's why I think that it is a highly multiplying place. I also uh, led in the past uh, programs outside schools and universities and uh, empowerment uh, programs for women and marginalized segments uh, of society. Yeah, and I see that uh, by producing the book of uh, Equality and Justice, Collaborative Work. The outcomes of the TWISA project that I uh, and a colleague from the University of Virginia started a number of years ago was um, establishing these transnational dialogues between students uh, and those dialogues were around issues of women's rights, uh, human rights, education, leadership and uh, the like. And those debates were um, uh, edited into a book that was published by Parlor Press and was one of the most amazing things that we did. So, uh, Professor Priest, could you tell me in instance you experienced it or witnessed it any kind of heat? I mean, what strategies and personal efforts you did to bring people together or uh, to counter the rhetoric of hate and injustice? All right, thank you for that question because surprisingly enough, most of the uh, experiences that uh, I have had were at universities and schools. And this is why in the, uh, in the past, I authored a book with uh, MENA region leaders. And the, my chapter was entitled, Educating People, the Only Panacea. I do uh, uh, believe that panaceas don't exist, but I think if there is anything in this world that can function as a panacea, is the school. The school can be a panacea or a poison at the same time. So uh, I think that most of the injustices that exist in society start in schools. And one of them uh, happened to me when I was uh, at Syracuse University and uh, I was there the time when um, the, uh, President Don Donald Trump was elected and I, I experienced uh, some instances of hate during that uh, crazy time and also here in Algeria in the south where when I, uh, I was recruited in uh, the Ecole Normale Supérieure in the south and there was a lot of um, tribal let's say hate and vendettas and feuds uh, and uh, tribalism and I experienced a lot of that and, uh, and uh, uh, this experience also taught me a lot of things and uh, it helped me reflect and understand that most of the hate that exists has a trauma behind it. So there is a lot of history and trauma that we need to understand in order to be able to deal with hate. So uh, this is it. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor, for taking the time. I really appreciate all what you have done as a civic leader, a teacher. Thank you very much. So the pleasure is all mine and the honor is all mine. And I always uh, get my inspiration from you, you and your colleagues uh, and all the wonderful work that you are doing.